probably heard of IQ, which means intelligence quotient. And you may even have taken an intelligence test, which is supposed to measure how intelligent you are.
to support this theory comes from the fact that people who score really well in one type of test, such as verbal ability, also tend to score really well in other types of tests, such as math. Now, you might be better at one of these categories than the other relative to yourself, but relative to other people, you probably have about the same level of skills in both areas. The factor underlying these consistent abilities is referred to as the G factor. You can think of G for general intelligence. Although there's some good evidence for G, there's also some support for theories of multiple intelligences. A psychologist named Robert Sternberg proposed a theory of three main types of intelligence. Analytical intelligence, what we might think of as academic abilities, or the ability to solve well-defined problems. Creative intelligence, the ability to react adaptively to new situations and to generate novel ideas. And practical intelligence, the ability to solve ill-defined problems, such as how to get that bookcase up the curvy staircase into your apartment. When someone tells you their IQ score, what they're really telling you is their analytical intelligence. The scores are scaled so that an average person's score is 100. So depending on where you are in relation to 100, you can tell how you compare to the population at large. You may be wondering how intelligence affects people's lives. Obviously, people with high analytical intelligence tend to do well in school. However, people who score high on any of the intelligence scales we've mentioned so far don't really tend to have better marriages, raise their kids better, or achieve greater mental and physical well-being than people who score lower. For this reason, another psychologist proposed that there is another type of intelligence, called emotional intelligence. This ability helps you perceive, understand, manage, and use emotions in your interactions with others. Yet another way of thinking about intelligence is in terms of two major categories, fluid intelligence and crystallized intelligence. Fluid intelligence is our ability to reason quickly and abstractly, such as when we're solving novel logic problems. Crystallized intelligence, on the other hand, refers to our accumulated knowledge and verbal skills. The main difference here is that fluid intelligence tends to decrease as we move into older adulthood, whereas crystallized intelligence tends to increase or stay the same. With all this talk about different definitions of intelligence, you're probably wondering how it ever gets measured. Interestingly, the first person to develop an intelligence test actually didn't even mean for it to be an intelligence test. Alfred Binet was just trying to establish a child's mental age in order to measure children's intellectual development and predict how well they would do in school. Later on, a psychologist at Stanford University modified Binet's original test and extended it to teenagers and adults. One thing that the Stanford psychologist noticed was that Binet's original test items, which were originally designed for French children, didn't seem very predictive of California children's abilities. After he modified the test, unfortunately, people forgot about that difference and started using the new version to judge how generally intelligent immigrants coming into the U.S. were. Now, you can probably see the problem with that even from just a language perspective. If a test is trying to measure verbal ability, then you might be able to do just fine in your native language, but it's a lot harder in a language you don't know. Since then, more pains have been taken to try to make intelligence tests more applicable to people from all different cultures, but it's an ongoing issue. One last consideration that's inherent in any question of traits or talents, but particularly popular with intelligence, is the question of nature versus nurture. That is, how much is intelligence due to your genes, and how much is due to your environment and other experience? We study this question by looking at heritability, which is the proportion of variability in a trait that's due to genes. Specifically, we usually study heritability with twin and adoption studies, meaning we look at the correlation between intelligence scores and